this video, I'm going to show you how to make a graph in Excel from a data table. Now, um, this is a data table that, um, that I've created. I have another video that you can uh, see how this is created if you want. Um, it's called creating a data table in Excel. Now you can see on the left, I've got the values of my independent variable. Then here I've got all the raw data. Then I've got the values of the mean and then the values for the standard deviation. Now for creating a table, I'm not actually going to use the raw data. I'm just going to use the values of the independent variable, the values of the mean, and eventually the values of the standard deviation in order to create error bars. So to make a table, sorry, to make a graph, I'm going to highlight the values of my independent variable. Then I'm going to, whilst it's on an, um, an Apple computer, I push the command key. On a PC, I would push the control key. And whilst keeping the, holding the control key, I can also now highlight the values of the mean. So that has highlighted the values of the independent variable and um, the values for the mean. Now I can go to um, insert and I want to insert um, a scatter plot like this. Okay, so there's my graph. Um, I'm just going to move it out the way so I can also see my data table. Okay, now there's many things I need to do to this graph to make it sort of ready so it can be used for an investigation. The first thing I want to do is add error bars to these data and the lengths of the error bars are going to represent the standard deviations. So I, um, on the top left here, on Add Chart Element, I click on that, and then I click on Error Bars. Now, you think, well, okay, I want to plot standard deviation, so maybe I just click on standard deviation here. But that's not going to give me um, the right standard deviation that I want. So I'm going to go to More Error Bar Options. Um, I want both means I want an error bar above and below the point. Um, I want a little cap at the end of the error bar. Now I want to customize the length of my error bars and then I'm going to click on here, specify value. Now I need to go up to my data table and you see here there's a little field here that I can enter the values or the, the cells where Excel can find the values for the size of those error bars. So I'm just going to highlight um, all the values of my standard deviation and you can see here it has entered um, you don't need to be able to understand it but this is just the text to show that it's um, referring to those cells Then I click on this little button here um, this is to do for the the error bars below the points and again I'm just going to do exactly the same thing again um, so I've now got the same text in both those boxes I click on OK and what it's done is it's changed the size of the um, positive uh, of the error bars but I need to now delete the horizontal error bars so I can just click on one like that press delete and it's removed them okay so now I've got my data I've got error bars um, the next thing I need is a line of best fit so again I can go to add a chart element um, I can go to um, a trend line which is what Excel calls a line of best fit um, I don't want I can try plotting a linear line now uh, that looks like it could be good, but this point is above the line, this point is above it, and in the middle it's below it. That implies that maybe a curve would be more appropriate. So um, I'm just going to delete that, and I'm going to add a new trend line. This time I'm going to go to more trend line options, um, and I want a polynomial order two. And you can see that fits my data better than the, um, the straight line did, so I'm going to stick with that. Um, I may want to make a few little changes to my trend line. Uh, for example, um, uh, instead of it being blue, I want it to be black because it'll come out better if I print it in black and white. Um, I can also say, well, I don't want it to be dashed. I just want it to be a solid line. Okay, now that's a bit easier to read. Now, a few other things is my x-axis here is going up to 1.2, whereas my data only goes up to 1. So I can, um, um, if I just click on it, it gives me options on the side here of how to format it. Now, um, if I click on um, this little picture of a chart here, it gives me the minimum and maximum values of my x-axis. And I want the maximum value to be 1.0. 
Um, let's press enter and that changes that. Okay, so it's starting to look a little bit better. Um, other things are, I'm not going to actually add a chart title um, because I'm going to be including a caption once I've copied this into my investigation. I'm going to add um, axis titles. So um, the primary horizontal, this is the axis title for the, um, for the x-axis. And in this case, it's going to be um, concentration of sucrose solution. And I always need to give the units, in this case, big M for molarity. Okay. And I also want to include a Y, um, um, a y axis title. And um, this is the ch um, percentage or change in mass. And this is the units are going to be percent. Okay. Um, some things that are often good to do is just um, uh, change the the, um, the size of fonts. Um, in this case, it's font size nine. Um, I could try twelve. It just makes it a little bit easier to read. And if I click on the graph in general, um, I can change the um, the font size for all the text. Now it makes it a little bit easier to read. Okay, the zero point eight and the one um, are a bit more difficult. Uh, one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the um, um, the grid. Although I've got these vertical and horizontal lines here, um, I want it to be a little bit. Um, um, I want there to be more. Um, I'm just trying to find how to do that in a new version of Excel. Um, chart design. Um, okay, I'm going to leave that for now because I can't find out how to do it in this version of Excel. Um, but uh, at least for now, my graph is ready. I can just copy that um, and paste it into my investigation. Okay, thank you.